Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of the Godzilla Garage, where I exclusively talk about Godzilla and Godzilla related content. This is it everyone, the moment I've been waiting all year for, and as well as the past five years. And I've seen the movie four times already, so I can give my honest feelings on Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019. Godzilla's battle in San Francisco has caused a devastating loss for Dr. Emma and Mark Russell. Both are scientists that work for the government organization known as Monarch, who is in charge of monitoring as well Godzilla as well as other creatures like him called Titans. When eco-terrorists kidnap Emma and her daughter Madison, Mark and Monarch uncover their plot to rekindle a feud between the two Alpha Titans as well as causing a further divide amongst the divorced couple that has put Madison and the planet in the middle of a destructive dispute and battle. Okay, so I loved Godzilla 2014, and that's been a very divisive movie. I'm surprised that it's divisive among Godzilla fans, but neither here nor there. So, major complaints. Too much focus on the human characters, not enough battles within the Daikaiju, well, Kaiju, well, Titans for the Western audience. And, you know, it would, the movie dragged on and it was shot in the dark too much. Most of those are, well, some of them, if you're a Godzilla fan, you shouldn't complain, but neither here nor there. So, how does this movie stack up? Does it improve or anything? Well, there is a lot of improvement. For example, I'm going to start off with the most important things. The Titans. You see them clearly, and you see their battles. There is hardly any cutaways, and they're in their total glory. This movie has my favorite rendition of Ghidorah, both in look and in personality, you know? must say. This also has my best look of Rodan. You know, Rodan looks better than he's ever looked at all. And, you know, the original suit was awesome and proceeding after that, he kind of looks bad. You know. However, I feel that general audiences will actually like Ghidorah the most and then they'll also gravitate towards Mothra a lot. The human characters are actually better in this movie, you know, we can follow them along and, you know, we have somewhat of a connection and we can understand some of their thoughts and, this, and their feelings within this movie, you know, so that's an improvement. It is, this is not a dark movie. You can actually clearly see the, what's going on, the battles, as well as what's happening with the humans, thanks to actually the Titans actually emitting a lot of light. You know, which is awesome. All right. Now, here are the bad parts about this movie. All right. Oh, I forgot. Before I go into the bad parts, I must state that we got the Godzilla theme and we got Mothra sleep. Awesome. Now let's go into the bad parts. The previous movie had a nuanced plot. Here, you do not have a nuanced plot. You have a plot that's actually feasible for a movie like this, but. You know, it's too much in your face, face value. Doesn't leave you much time to really think or digest of what you just saw. While the monster battles are here and you can see them clearly, it's still pretty much in the dark, most of them. I wish we saw more of the monster battles in the movie. However, we do get to see them clearly throughout the day. And Rodan's chase scene, you know, is actually pretty awesome. But Rodan himself, as one of the top five, you know, of Toho's um, Daikaijus, oh man, he's not going to get any respect anymore, which really pisses me off because I'm a big Rodan fan, you know. You are not, you do not feel like you're in the movie. You know, which is something that 2014 did effectively. You felt like you were in this movie. 
You know, you can literally place yourself in like the destruction running away from something. Here, you're just an outside spectator, you know. And yeah, there's that. We got the Godzilla theme and the Mothra theme, but I wanted to hear the Ghidorah theme. I wanted to hear the Rodan theme in this, you know. I kind of wished we got more of Rodan and Mothra in this movie. And I wish we got more of a mix of uh, Titan fights, you know. While the human characters are better, there are too many human characters. And the ones that do die, you know, it's not a shock that those characters died. And to top it off, I wish more did die, you know. And I wish they gave them more distinct personalities, you know. Kong Skull Island gave them thin personalities, but they were distinct. Here, they're not as distinct, and you don't get much of a connection with them. Now, all that said, I am surprised that they had as many Heisei-era Godzilla references in this movie. You know, all the Easter eggs from the Showa era and Heisei era, and some from the Millennium, I was surprised that they were done effectively well. Now, I thought we would see more Showa references, since this is kind of a liking to Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster, to a degree, but we, if you're a fan... You'll see some, you know, show up references, but you're going to see a reference from 1985 or the Return of Godzilla or Goji 84. You'll see a reference to Biollante, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. You'll see a reference to Mothra vs. Godzilla. You're going to see a reference to every single Heisei era movie, which is pretty awesome. Thus, but it's done in a westernized way, so. Mm, meh. And that's how I feel about this movie overall. It does a lot of things right as a G fan. But if you're a general audience member that's not already invested into the franchise, this movie is not going to do that for you at all. This is why I say Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 is cool. Agree? Disagree? I know there's going to be heated conversations below, but please drop them in the comments below. Give me a like. Follow me on Facebook at Token Dave where I have two additional reviews, both from a critical and a fanboy pure perspective, as well as follow me on Instagram and Twitter at TokenDave80. Subscribe and ring that bell so you know when new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by. Catch all of y'all later, and long live the king.